Today's uh, lecture is on superposition, which sounds maybe maybe more exciting than it is. <laughs> You're gonna love it. It's exciting. It's it's super. All right. So what is superposition? Well, it's basically a way of using that equation for deformation that we came up with in the last uh, lecture uh, to deal with more complex uh, situations. Like, for instance, this rod up here that has a load at the end uh, and two loads in the middle. It also can help us if we have a rod with a different cross-sectional areas, um, but it uh, allows us to take that simple uh, equation that we had last time and expand its usefulness. Uh, and it is just a fancy way of uh, saying that we're going to add things together. But that's that's interesting, right? It's interesting that what we're going to find is that we can either separate this into three areas, three sections, and find the internal resultant load in each one of those and use the equation. Or, and this is really what superposition means, we can just treat this bar, we can figure out what's the deformation caused by this guy while we ignore the 40 and the 70. Then we can figure out what the deformation is that's caused by the 40 and we can ignore the 80 and the 70. And then finally we can ignore both of these and find out what the deformation is that's caused by the 70. Um, and that's interesting, right? Because uh, you'd think that those loads might be acting together in some kind of nonlinear way. They're not. Uh, and so because they're acting uh, in a linear way, we can just sum them up. We can find the effect of each one uh, and add them together. And that's called superposition. Um, and it is, uh, it is easy peasy <laughs> once, you, once you get the hang of it. It's, uh, it's not so easy peasy when you start with. Oh, and we do have some small print here. I'm going to allow you to read <laughs> that on your own. Big idea is that it has to be uh, basically a linear relationship between P and deformation. All right, so we're going to first use um, the more common way of dealing with superposition, and that is the equation that we used last time. If I want to find the deformation of this rod in total, I'll find the deformation in AB by finding the internal resultant load. I'll find it in BC by finding its internal resultant load uh, and so forth. And so we want to find the total displacement of this whole rod. Uh, we've got a value for A and for uh, E there. Uh, and so we'll find the internal resultant forces in each section. So in CD here, right, if I wanted to, if I create a section right here, and I look at this section, then if I, I know statics, I've got a force like if in, within this section here, I've got a 70 kilonewton force that way, so I've got to have a 70 kilonewton internal resultant force there. And so uh, that's going to be a force that within this section here is going to be compressive, right? Again, I take that section. That means I've got an arrow going left to right, uh, and that means all of the material in here is being compressed. Uh, I can do the same kind of section analysis to find uh, my internal resultant forces in BC uh, and in AB. I'll let you uh, go ahead and solve that for AB. So that's your first uh, Moodle question. And moving on to the next slide. So we make our load distribution diagram, just like we did at the beginning of the term. Um, and we find that, you know, as we suspected here, it's we've got a compressive load of 70, a compressive load of 30 kilonewtons, and then a tensile load in this section here. Now we can figure out what the deformation in each of those sections is, right? So in each section now, we have a P that is different than the other sections, and we have an L that's different. So essentially what we're doing is we're finding out, okay, we've got a tensile load here. How much is this section expanding? 
how much is this section being compressed, how much is this section being compressed, and we're adding those three things together. Uh, and I'll let you sort of dig into the math here, but you can see A and E are staying the same for each of these. Um, and so it looks complicated, but it's more complicated than complex. It's just a matter of doing all the algebra. And then we want to think about, okay, if we look at these, these values are useful here, right? This here is telling me how much that first section is being expanded. This is telling me how much the second section is being compressed. So this question asks between A and C here, that is in these two sections, which of these is bigger? Is this compression bigger or is that um, expansion bigger? And pause if you need to. And now we'll go on to the next slide. Oh, no, we won't. We've got one more question. So go ahead and solve the equation here. This is going to tell you the answer to that. But if you solve these top three, you really don't even have to do the full division. If you just figure out what this value is and that value is and that value is, you can answer questions two and three here. And pause. And going on to the next slide. Okay, so we can now look at these values here and we can get a sense of what kind of expansion and compression we have, right? A positive expansion here of value 100, you know, 100 times 10 to the third, uh, a compression of negative 30 and a compression of negative 105. So in here, as you might suspect from this plot, not much is happening. It's both a small internal resultant force and a small length. Um, this is a larger length and a larger length, and both of those have uh, larger magnitudes of uh, force within them. And we get the overall change in our, uh, in our rod. And this asks if you can find that relationship, what are these numbers? Well, they're P times L, right? So P is the height, L is the width here. And so this area within the rectangle is actually telling us the amount of compression, right? The deformation in each section is represented by the, the area of each of these rectangular boxes. All right, so now we're going to address the same problem, but we're going to address it doing uh, in a different way uh, by instead of figuring out what the change is in this section and what the change is in that section and what the deformation in that section is, we're going to instead say, what is the deformation caused only by this 80 kilonewton load? And then what is the deformation only caused by this 40 kilonewton load? Uh, and then finally by that 70 kilonewton. So we're instead of going section by section, we're going to go load by load, and we can still just add them together uh, because of the linear nature of that um, delta equals PL over AE equation. So we're going to start with the 80 kilonewton load here. We're going to find the change in uh, distance created just by that load in AB, right? We're going to treat this rod as if this was the only force acting upon it. And if that were the case, then there's no internal resultant force out here, right? If, I, if this wasn't here and I created a sec section here, I'd find that my internal resultant load was zero. So I can ignore this for the time being and say, okay, all I have to deal with is this section uh, between A and B. And that's why you see that two meters there. Now, when we go to find the the change in AC caused by force C, that is by this 40 kilonewton load. Here, we're not just going to deal with BC. If this were the only load here, this entire section would be deformed by that 40 kilonewton load. Okay, so we want to figure out what that 
full deformation is uh, that's created by that 40 kilonewton load. So we use the whole length of AC. Okay, so again, if this were the only force here, we would say that's my length, and then my internal resultant force would be 40. Uh, and so that's our equation there. And then finally, this last load, 70 kilonewton load, is going to affect the entire rod, and so we use our length there. Now we're just going to sum them up. We're going to say what's the deformation caused by the 80 kilonewton load? What's the deformation caused by the 40 kilonewton load? What's the deformation caused by the 70 kilonewton load? And again, notice our signs here. These are tensile, right? They're going to expand our rod. This one is compressive, so it's going to be negative. Uh, and we sum those up. Uh, and it, we, I don't include AE here just to keep things a little tidier. Uh, but we find that the deformation is exactly the same as the deformation we found before, right? Uh, and we'd expect that, right? These are just two ways of solving the same problem. Uh, and they give you some sense of the kind of nature of, uh, of these axial loads, that, that we can add them together uh, in multiple different ways. And in fact, if we wanted to find the stresses uh, in here, and in here and in here, we could use the same process, right? I could find the stress in A to B caused by my 80 kilonewton load, then find the stress in A to B caused by my 40 kilonewton load, and I could sum those together. Uh, and then with my the stress in A to B caused by 70 kilonewton load, and that would give me my stress in A to B. So the big picture here is, uh, is that the linear nature of this equation gives us different ways that we can solve complex problems like this one, uh, basically by either adding, figuring out what the deformation is caused by each section, or, and adding those, or figuring out the deformation caused by each load and adding those. And that's today's lecture.